is here. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> Come out of it early. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Don't ask him that question, please. <laughs> He's probably still laughing about my remark. Yes, I still am. <laughs> good evening, Vanelli. Hello, my man. Yeah, I just got the email a couple, of, maybe two hours ago. Oh, for this. See, Lori. I, I don't know why I even try. Although I'm not supposed to be talking because Lori told me to shut up. I did not. <laughs> hey. That'll never work. I know. <laughs> but actually, Lori, you know, Van Vanelli, I just went through your instructions of how to install the new uh, axe for the augmented sky. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you showed how to open a zip file. That was no problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're killing me. <laughs> All right, so Lori, at least we, we can make you laugh. But uh, Lori, I, I gave an episode on Coffee Break, yeah, and it was about zipping files. We went down such a bad rabbit hole; it was the worst. I, I in, in thirty years, it was the worst episode I've ever done. Which now we call that the zip episode, <laughs> and we use that as a litmus test. There was nothing zippy about it. Yeah. Oh man! All right, we still got people coming in. I'm gonna. Um, Bob's supposed to join us too because he's supposed to be one of my people doing uh, talking about images um, that you were sent. Yes. Oh, good. Oh, good. Wonderful. Yeah, Lori, yeah, make sure make sure his epidermis isn't acting up. <laughs> I'm not gonna be your friend anymore, Mister Vanelli. I, I called Lori with a raspy voice and said, Lori, I can't, I can't make it to my epidermis is acting up. You don't have to tell everyone. <laughs> that just goes to show you that I wasn't really paying attention to what you were saying. <laughs> so, so Lori, my, my son and I, what we honestly do when my, my ex-mother-in-law, when she never paid attention, we would say in the middle of a story, so the plane, the plane crashed, and we all died. And the, oh, wow, that's nice. And that's how we know that we're paying attention. Uh, all right. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you guys all for joining. I'm going to, we'll, we'll get started here. We only had a couple people send images in. Um, in the past, what we were doing in these Hangouts was just kind of randomly picking a subject and chatting about it. Um, we thought we'd be a little bit more helpful if we would um, do something a little more constructive, maybe a little more focused, uh, a little more photo focused. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you should be ashamed. I know. I couldn't help myself. Um, well, I can't run this and do this at the same time because there's people coming in and wanting to join that are like spam people. So anyway, I, I could tell by their name was like a, a business name for something not photography related. Oh. Anyway, um, so what we had, I asked in the community for people to submit images um, for, we're going to call it not critique because we don't like the word critique at photo focus um, because that's a negative connotation. Um, so what we'd like to do is to be able to help people with their images. So hence the photo assist. Um, and this week we were going to have Bob. Um, somebody sent in a landscape image and Ash, who's on the call with us, sent in a picture of a puppy. And um, so I was going to have Bob kind of talk us talk to us about the, the landscape image, which he has not seen yet. And I'll just share it with, with my screen, if that's OK. Is that that should work, I think, Bob? I haven't seen anything yet. I know. So... No, I haven't done it. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> no, I mean, I once, I, once, I, once yeah. you set it up, okay. I can let you know whether it'll work um, or not. I was hoping that the person that sent it would be on the call, though, because they, you know, I, I like people to tell us about the image, like why they shot it, what their intentions were, and all that kind of stuff. And that's so that important. we know. Yeah, it is. Um, I can read what she posted in the, um, when she, when she, um, when she posted it in the group, I can kind of give that as a background to the image. So at least we know 
um, a little bit about what her intentions might be. Or actually, she well, she didn't really. She just oh, wait. To know, she um, just wanted to I know think what. Jo would, uh, yeah, Joanne, Joanne, Joanne Gardner just said she's here. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm on the call. Oh, where? Can you hear me? But your name is Pan. Oh, there you oh, are. There you are. Can you hear me? I'm at the top. <laughs> I see. Well, you're at the top on your screen. You're like on three rows screen, down right? and five over on mine. So. Hi. Good. Oh, good. Okay. Cool. Well, I'm just going to share my screen then the, of, with the image, and then um, we'll ask you know ask you a couple of questions about it. Um, sure. So that, and then we'll have Bob kind of go over some things that that might have helped you get closer to what you wanted to do with it. Right. All right. Uh, Lori, we might yep. uh, mute everybody, um, yep. and then have us that are speaking turn it back on. I could do that, or if everybody would just mute yourself, I, that helps too. Um, so I don't. If I mute all, I don't know if you can unmute yourself. Yeah, I can ask you to unmute and I can ask you to unmute. All right, yep. that should work. Okay, Joanne, if you unmute yourself, there you go. Okay. Did All right, work? so yeah, yeah, let, me, <laughs> let me pull up the image desktop. And I'm gonna put it over here and try to share this screen. Okay, so while you're while you're putting that together, um, one thing to think about uh, when we do these, um, in when I'm judging for national and international um, and state uh, organizations, one of the things that happens is you it's good to be profiled if you can. I don't know if uh, you know what the level of skill of everybody is, but profiling means how the brightness of your uh, screen. So if I view it on a different brightness than you've worked it at, then we may end up with things, I may see things that you don't intend to see, just so you're aware. Also, Bob, so, somebody wanted to know a little bit about you, like, like you know, just your background and stuff. Uh, 25 plus years as a professional photographer. I've worked my way through, you know, almost every genre you can think of, except for evidence photography. Um, and currently, I am a uh, commercial and fine art photographer, and I actually refer to myself as a lens-based artist uh, in that all of my source material comes through a camera lens. After that, all bets are off, blending images, textures, um, you know, adjusting color, density, um, and creating my art that way um, versus using, say, a paintbrush. All right. Um, All right. And then, you know, a lot of people ask about my book. Um, basically, if you look across the top here, here's some of my awards over the years. That says that I take my photography very, very seriously. Um, and then the uh, book, Even Fairies Fart, lets you know that I don't take myself too seriously. <laughs> um, and then also I have a secondary book there for uh, research, and it's called Does It Fart? The Definitive Field Guide to Animal Flatulence. So, now you know a lot about me. More than you might have wanted to know. But <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me share my screen here. And can you see that? Uh, yes, we can. All right. This looks like my neighborhood. It you in Arizona? Very big. Uh, yeah, I'm in Sedona. Oh, yeah, it is your neighborhood for sure. Okay. Talk to us, Joanne. Well, I, I, I mean, I actually like it but it just doesn't grab me. And I'm just wondering um, what I could have done differently. I'm having trouble with the tree on the right. I don't know if I should have just take that out or if I should have put more of the tree in. Um, so, you know, I love this tree. You know, this tree spoke to me. And of course the colors of Sedona, I absolutely love. But, so I was really just looking for ideas as to next time, you know, maybe how to shoot it a little differently. Okay. Um, you know, when I, when I look at this, and one of the things that we need to think about when we're uh, making photographs is that a beautiful subject or even an interesting subject does not necessarily make a great photograph. Mm -hmm. What makes a great photograph is 
really good attention to light, being able to control your contrast, uh, your color the way you want. And, you know, of course, your composition is all part of that. Uh, but but in my mind, there's a tendency a, a lot, and I was guilty of this for many, many years, and actually I still am, as a matter of fact, um, that you see something that's like really cool, and you go, oh, man, yeah, and you're at it. This is a great tree. I would go back and explore it. And where you may fall, you know, right now, look at your time of day. You're in a very high contrast time of day. If you picked something closer to either sunrise or sunset, depending upon which direction you want to shoot in, um, you can probably have a tighter, I mean, a softer um, contrast ratio. Your colors will get warmer. Uh, when we shoot at, and I'm thinking this is what, maybe 11 o'clock in the morning or something like that? Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I, when I see 11 o'clock in the morning, it's like, that's when I break out my infrared camera because infrared would make, and I can't point to things, but infrared would make all of these, um, you know, the trees just kind of glow. The clouds would go white against a really dark sky. Um, the contrast on at that time of day is not objectionable in an infrared photograph. So if you want to make, to me, if you want to make a really, um, and I look for the word I call nummy, mm, I, you know, I try and look for that time of day. So in a sunset time when you have a nice angle and soft light, and, and, and actually in Sedona, I often shoot after the sun gets down below the horizon because you get that uh, little bounce off the top and everything just kind of goes, oh, and there's like maybe a seven to nine minute window about 10 to 12 minutes after the sun goes below the horizon where that happens. And you get that kind of uh, pink glow and the blue, the blue, the kind of the little nice subtle colors running through there. So those would be things that I would look for. Look for the, you know, uh, look either for the shadows or look for the light. In this particular case where we're talking, I think you need to look for the light but that has really nice shadows that work and, and give it that shape and form, but in a really nice, nummy way. Okay. That's good, yeah. but sometimes as a tourist, which I usually have, <laughs> you know, I'm stuck with like the middle of the day. Okay. For shooting. All right. So I, if you're, if you're stuck if with the middle of the day with shooting, then you have to be creative with your processing. So we'll, we'll go to a next level. You say, gosh, I'm really interested in this tree. While you're out shooting, make sure that you said, oh, I'm, I mean, I'm not sure that this tree on the right is helpful for me. Well, did you shoot this a bunch of different ways or did you just take one shot and go? So if you haven't, and, uh, an image of something in your mind, you're like, God, I really love this tree. How many different angles did you take it from? Did you move in closer? Did you squeeze? Did you go further away and use a telephoto lens to compress the scene? Did you use a really wide angle lens really close? Did you use a fisheye or, or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, so the idea is to really explore your subject. Now, because you don't have that wonderful time of day, the one thing you can do, and I've, you know, we all have to do it, you know, like you say, when we get out there, you can go in and process, and you can actually do you shoot in RAW or JPEG. Um, I can't remember. Generally, I shoot RAW. So okay, yeah. so shooting in RAW, you have lots of yeah. pixels with which to work, and then you have um, Photoshop and uh, Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, whichever is your you know preferred neighborhood or Luminar. Uh, Luminar 4, Luminar AI can help you with that. And then you can go in and you can go to work on the highlights and the shadows and the color. And then um, things like the mystical filter that gives it just that little, so you can build some of the things that you're looking for because you couldn't do it while you were shooting. Okay, that's, uh, and I'm, I need to work on, I need to learn processing I'm, I'm very i do very basic processing it okay if you if you think about it ansel so, adams um he used to process his film under green light 
so that he could watch the film as it was developing and say, okay, I want to stop this right now. And he would expose for either the highlights or the shadows and then develop for the opposite. And then he would choose the paper that he was going to print on. And then he was going to dodge and burn and, you know, make the image come to what he wanted it to see, wanted it to be. And so to me, processing is maybe more than 50%, you know, capturing the initial pixels is one thing, but then creating that final image is um, where you really, you know, get to shine. Um, and you had mentioned maybe this tree on the right is not your friend. Uh, how about a square crop? Yeah, that's what I was, I was going to go to that next, I think, you know, it's just cut it out and go to square and see how it looks. So. Sure. Or even, even a, a, what I would call a slim gym and just the tree going straight up and down in a real thin composition. Yeah. Um, and then the tree, now the subject that you said you're, you know, that you're enamored with, you know, we only have this one image to work with since you didn't explore it more. Right. Um, but now, but in composition and in cropping, we could go in and play with this and just, just really stay nice and tight and then play with that. Okay. Um, try good. black and white, try sepia tone, um, open up those shadows just a little bit, bring down your highlights just a little bit. So yeah. those are, again, just some ideas for you. Good. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's awesome. Sure. That, that was the, the first thing. I, the first thing I thought of when I saw this was the tree on the right. That was like, okay. And my first question would have been what you asked is like, did you go around the tree to the other side? Did you try to take it from different, you know, so that yeah. the tree on no, the right. This, 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 this was a hiking trip with my husband. This is oh, yeah. a photography trip. <laughs> right. So you, you get what you get sometimes on oh, those trips. Oh, you kind of snap <laughs> and go. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> right. Okay. okay, but you can also be, as you're going by. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, I'm heading out to Colorado oh, in a few weeks, what, so what, I'll do better. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sure, you're very welcome. Um, right. Hopefully I've some got, of those ideas are good for you. Yeah, let me, they are. Let me stop sharing for a second. Um, let me go find, someone just said that they had oh. put one in that might be a good um, next image for this. Uh, let me find it really quick. Um, that wasn't tagged for this particular thing, but it's an infrared shot. So it would be, it would go in line with what you were talking about, about switching, um, you know, the processing and changing something to black and white or um, a different way of, of, you know, uh, processing it to help, you know, make the image work if it didn't work. Yeah, many of us, many of us have cameras sitting on the shelf that maybe we've grown past and we haven't gotten rid of the cameras yet. Um, that's a great candidate to have converted to uh, infrared. And then you can have a second buy. To me, that infrared opens up that whole nasty light, quote unquote, time of day to um, really get, you know, to go in and play and do some some things that are quite different. All right, Michael, are you are you able to? You're not yeah. muted, right? No, I, I'm 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 good. I'm here. Uh -huh. Okay, and you're not muted. So because yeah. everybody yeah. else is muted, so that we kind of not and get distract. The distractions is is sometimes a sure. yeah. Issue. Sorry about that. I I just unmuted myself. No, we're, that's off. okay. Perfect. And, it, and if gonna, you want, I can kind of move aside because it's no. I'm I'm good. I'll sh I'll sh I've got it up on my other screen. So okay. we'll share the screen. You guys should all be able to see Mike Michael's. And it's an IR infrared shot. Mm -hmm. And Vanelli, I mean, if somebody else wants to, you know, or, or um, Julie or Vanelli want to pop in on this the one too. Um, I know that that landscapes are Bob's thing, but you know. Oh, well, that Steve brought a good okay, point. Yeah. Steve brought out a good point. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you want to explain what infrared is. Yeah. Um. Somebody else want to do that because I don't shoot it, and it's not my oh, thing. Bob shoots it. Sure. Um, infrared is where you the, we have visible light and invisible light that goes beyond what we see with our eyes. And what infrared shooting does is um, on all of our cameras or most of our cameras, we have an infrared filter to keep that light from coming into the camera and uh, destroying the, the, the light because it also focuses on a different plane. So when uh, you get a camera converted to an infrared light, if they take out the filter that keeps away the infrared, and then you choose a certain type of filter. Um, 
and that will allow a certain amount of visible light to come through. And uh, for example, I use a 720 nanometer, that's the light measurement um, of the infrared that I want to capture. <clears throat> I really that's and that's pretty much that traditional filter that you used to get and in days past you had to put a filter on the front of your camera and it was so dark you couldn't see anything and then you had to go in and even once you got there and you got it focused then you had to change the focus again because the infrared focused different than your visible light camera so nowadays if you have a camera converted if you're looking at live view if you have live view available it will allow you to see exactly what it is. You can see the full image. If you set your camera to monochrome, then you will start to see the beginnings of your infrared. Uh, and then infrared in the past also, it would invert colors like it would take uh, green leaves, for example, here, and it would make them white and they would glow and it would be kind of a grainy, gritty kind of a feel. Um, clouds, white clouds against blue sky. Blue skies turn deep black uh, many times and the, the clouds just pop. Um, so those things just give you a totally different look. And as you can see, this is a you know quite nice little image here. Love using you know the reflection of the water. You see how dark it gets. You get a really contrasty look. I don't know, did I describe that infrared stuff enough or? I think so. I mean, does anybody okay. have any questions? Just pop a question in the chat and we'll we'll get to it. And and, and Bob, real quick, I was gonna point out, I, I was the um the photographer who took this one. And Sweet. first of all, thank you. I read uh, a couple of your articles, one of them recently that you had on uh, infrared. And myself being new to infrared photography, I just started, I got a camera converted back in October, and that's the one that I used for this. And um I, I've really been enjoying experimenting. I am using the 720, similar to what you had described there. And then this one, just kind of a little bit of background of it. I um, just took it a couple of weeks ago and then used Lightroom for a couple of quick adjustments, but most of the other adjustments were over in uh, Nick Silver Effects Pro. Mm -hmm. But but to your point, you know, you, like you said. I've really enjoyed just experimenting with it. It, it. It's fun when the light isn't great to see what kind of um, results you can get. In my case, I've pretty much every one that I've done, I've converted to black and white, but uh, I've noticed that I really get a lot more dramatic look in those scenes than I do. If I shoot this in color and then convert it to black and white, it, it doesn't carry across. Totally, it's a totally different animal because uh, the chlorophyll is doing its thing right. that's uh, being being seen that you can't see with your naked eye. Right. And, and I, again, I would just thank you for your, uh, you had a couple, uh, one article in particular that I remember that was uh, posted out on a group and that a week or two ago. So appreciate it. Oh, good. Good. Glad you enjoyed it. So Michael, do you want to uh, restate <laughs> like the questions that you asked about this in the, in the community so that Bob sure, knows? Sure. Yeah. Yep. When, when I had initially had posted this, a couple of the questions that I asked, one in particular was, I guess there were two that I had. One was, um, should I keep all of the ducks in? There's one with its head down over to the left. And then another part of it was, are there any other distractions that we would take out? Meaning such as like the, um, there's a little bit of a, like a riffle that caught a little bit of an extra bright, Right here. part of it down there on the there you go you're, you're hitting it right there perfect um and then i can't remember if i had any other specific questions on it those were the couple of things that i had asked on it and i think the feedback that i got was yeah the, the duck with a head down probably could be eliminated maybe that's a distraction just kind of where the location is and to that point also that that little um you know the bright spot that's kind of in that center where that ripple is maybe that kind of draws the eye away from the rest of the scene. Yeah, now, now my first re reply is, this is your art, Michael. <laughs> sure. Okay, and now my second reply would be, yeah, that would be the first thing that I would get because it's a little bit soft there as well. Yeah. Um, it's, it looks like a little something, a little schmun floating on the water. Um, and right. instead of just totally removing that duck, maybe you could take, if you wanted to still have that duck there, you could give him a head. 
Oh, in other words, okay. take the other, you know, that. so you could yeah. you could give him a head and, and maybe bring one. So again, it's your art. Um, the one other thing that I would look at for uh, on this image would be uh, looking a little bit more to uh, the glamour glow and uh, letting letting those uh, white when you use the glamour glow, I usually sharpen a little bit more just to, you know, so that when you do the glamour glow, it doesn't just bloom. And then you get this kind of, again, moving to that nummy within the infrared world of that because that's what the uh, the old infrared film used to do. It used to just go. Right. Uh, real quick question. So when you mentioned glamour glow, is that a. Uh, that was like in that was in, Nick, that was in Nick. That was in Nick filters uh, okay. in okay. Nick Color Effects Pro 4. Yep. And it's weird. You're going to work on a black and white image with Nick Color Effects Pro 4. But um, I would go in and I would add maybe a little bit of tonal contrast. Okay. Um, in that same uh, filter pack, and then add that glamour glow after that. Okay, great. And then I let it go. I, I didn't know that that um, that that was a feature within the mix. So I learned something new here tonight. So thank yeah. you. Okay. Um, I think somebody had asked, uh, put a question in there. How much does it cost to convert? It depends on the camera, but somewhere between two seventy five and. 350 400 again it depends on the camera and the filter you're choosing if you go to uh, lifepixel.com actually i'll put a uh, link in the uh, in the chat there i'll dig that up and put a link in the chat for uh, life pixel which is who i use to do my conversions and i think mine was 350 and it was a nikon z7 or no excuse me z5 which is a mirrorless camera uh, z5 Cool. Does anybody else have any other questions about IR while we're on the subject? Um, either, you know, ping, ping in the in the chat. Um, it's hard. We're keeping everybody muted because what happens is everybody starts talking over everybody and it just becomes like very difficult <laughs> to um, moderate that. Um, I have one more image from Ash. Ash, if you want to unmute yourself. Okay. All right, and and um, we'll I'll share my screen and we'll ask you you know the same questions and I don't know V if you want to unmet or Julie, you know you guys want to pop in on this one, um, just you know Ash if you want to tell us what you were after what you're looking for or what you think you know you need help with with this, um, I believe this is a phone you you shot with your phone. Yes. yes. Uh, let me share my screen, and then what you're you know what are you looking for what what can we do to help you with right. what you're trying to do. Right, so um, basically the, I mean, the reason I shot this on the phone is because it was actually very hard to get this shot. This is a this is a very energetic puppy who's tired after a long day of uh, walking around the park. So I just I just snapped a few and this was the only one that came out. So under the circumstances, I'm pleased with it, but um, I'm not, you know, I don't know very much about, um, you know, post-processing and filters and, and adjusting images and things like that, but um, I do I do like the sort of softness of it, like the, um, you know, the uh, the fur is kind of indistinct and it's sort of, like I said, dreamlike. And so anything that I could, that can sort of enhance it, um, I'd be interested in, in, you know, ideas or suggestions. And then if I get a chance to sort of stage this again, um, is is the rug, you know, too similar in color to the fur? That was one of, that was sort of one of my things. Um, I sort of like the, those are, that's part of a table, the, the metal bars. I sort of like it. Uh, there, I'm actually more interested in uh, film and, you know, things like that. So, so as far as, um, what's it called, the frame, there, there's some rules for framing where you should divide it into thirds and you should have the most interesting thing on a vertical line near, you know, the two, the two thirds on, on either side. So it, it, as far as that goes, it sh it, would there be a slightly better position or should I, should I move it? Or, or, you know, what, what is also people's idea of uh, what's most interesting about this picture? Is it the dog's head? Is it the harness? So those are those are some things at the outset, but really, really any suggestions are pretty welcome. My first, my first thing is that it's too crowded, right? So okay. you didn't leave any space. I mean, it's good to fill the frame sometimes, sure. but like sure. you're, you're kind of <clears throat> like he cut off a little bit, and I, I can't tell right. if he's laying down or standing up. She, uh, she's actually like completely asleep. She's she's asleep oh, in the right. in his standing up. I was like, what? Yeah. I can't tell. Yeah, yeah, and yeah she, she's. <laughs> and the background is a bit busy, you know. So it yeah. depends on what you're going for, you know. Sure. If you sure. want to separate the dog from what you're shooting you, you're right. going to want to find something that's not so busy to shoot them against sure 
Um, and I was thinking maybe a filter could, could kind of increase some contrast between the, the dog and the background. Since I, I, might, I might actually be stuck with this picture, you know, because, um, you know, we'd have to arrange another visit. But um, as far as the fur, is there, does anyone have any tips as far as, you know, photographing animals or some sort of soft, soft textures, you know, anything like that? Well, I have, I, I'm, I'm assuming you zoomed in with your phone as well, right? Maybe a little bit. I don't, I don't actually remember. Okay, because um, when I use my close. phone and I zoom a lot, I get that that right. look, that soft and right. kind of a little oh, bit of digital noise in it. I see. I see. Like you can see here up in his ear. Um, oh. But I just I think that's a that's a product of the zooming of the camera okay. of the phone. Okay, so, so do you think I should take this without any zoom to, to try to? It would be sharper. I think it would okay. be sharper. Okay. Hmm. The more you zoom on a on a phone, generally speaking, uh, the fuzzier it gets. Right. I see. Um, I'll, I'll also throw a thought in there. I'm sort of feeling like the focus point ended up on the carpet and not on the puppy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So with the puppy being out of focus, it's going to be really hard to, you know, get anything really nice because look at the, how sharp that carpet is. Yeah. I was just right. about to say the same thing. And I was going to add that, uh, no, it's sort of hard here, but um, if you take your phone, whatever phone you're using, I think they all operate the same, and you poke your uh, finger uh, where you want it focused, usually with, with people, yeah, Bob's giving you a thumbs up, um, uh, like usually with people or animals, it's typically the eye, right? That's yeah. usually what we want in focus. So if you poke the eye, not literally, um, <laughs> <laughs> you would... Um, you would uh, get that in focus. So um, it's, yeah. It's good help. <clears throat> and um, you said that, um, if I may add one, one last thing uh, too, um, for animals, children, people, most of the time, although you can break rules, certainly, um, most of the time, it's really good to start at, at their eye level. Mm -hmm. um, so if you had like, say, gotten on the ground. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe that might have made um, a more interesting composition. Um, sure. And again, you can break rules. You'll see them all the time broken. But but a lot of times that's that's the way to go. Instead of um, hmm. doing it from your perspective, um, try and consider the the animal's perspective. So sure. that's, that's good. All. That's a good tip. Sure. Uh, try to get the so eyes good. in. Try try to get the animal's eyes like looking towards you or looking away from you. Um, right. But you said this was your dog or not your dog? No, this is my friend's dog that uh, yeah. came for a visit. So, and, and re, redo, you could do another, do another reshoot, but have like treats with, with you. And ready for this? When you're looking at the dog, excuse the sound, do something weird, and they'll give you this weird look on their face, and that's when you snap the shot. So I'll always look, and I'll always look for the reaction to the reaction. So when you do something like that, They'll do this really inquisitive look, snap, 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 and right. then when they relax, snap again, because um, you'll have a different look then. Interesting. So I, I mean, I, actually, I think the tip about put your, putting your finger on the point of aim is good because as far as like a reflexive, like very quick shot that I've got to get before something happens, right? So I was like, okay, get it, get it in focus, but then also like quickly, you know, push the finger down. So I'll, I'll practice doing that quickly uh, in case in case they come across any sort of impromptu things. In and future, also, so. if you try and shoot um, like almost like a burst mode, I know um, some phones do and some don't. But you can, like Vanilli was saying, if you get their attention and you can get a couple of shots quite rapidly, some you will get um, different sort of dynamics in their movement. But if you wait okay. that split second and then wait for them to relax, you will get that different look. Yeah. Um, and I know as somebody who has a really, really active puppy, <laughs> it can be quite challenging. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I've been working with my guy for a while now. And um, yeah, and just the treats and the noises and all the rest of it. Um, I actually just pull a chair out now. He sits on it and poses and goes, yep, I'm ready. <laughs> so, <laughs> training. So, it's yeah, called training. It's so right? <laughs> Uh, Sorry, what was also, that, Laurie? I said it's called training. <laughs> yeah. I also wanted to go back to something that Ash said before. So, Ash, you said that it was 
you, you know, you, you would have to practice um, uh, poking, poking the eye on the screen. Um, right. So I think perhaps what might help is um, with most phones, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the volume, there's a volume button or some such thing that can trigger the phone. Is that correct uh, on yours? You mean the camera? It, yeah. Uh, it, it'll trigger the camera. I think um, so. That's certainly the case with my phone here, um, where if I press this button, it triggers it. So in other words, I don't have to hit the actual button on the screen. So if I hold my oh, phone I see, like, I yeah. if I hold my phone like this, I've got one hand on what is basically the 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 um, uh, the trigger, the, or I can't think of the proper word, and um, then my other hand is uh, able to focus by by pressing it. Sure. Sure. So so um, I'm I'm able to get a composition fairly quickly or, or focused. So yeah. I'll give it a shot. Yeah. So yeah, I, obviously I don't know much about photography, but uh, you know, I, I there are a lot of people online who are just like, you know, just if even if you all you have is your phone, you know, take the picture, right? And no, there's plenty of decide. there's plenty of mobile phone photographers out there, and that's what this is about, is and that's what the community is about, is people who want to learn more, whether it's mobile photography, and there's a group in the community for mobile photography, and there's mm -hmm. plenty of photographers in the community of all levels. Who are more than willing to jump in and help you out with whatever you know right. that's what we're here for yeah that's great i mean i've already got some great tips um, yeah great so tips. that's that's awesome yeah because i mean every single one of us use phones there's nothing wrong with using a phone so right, right. So uh, oh no I'm, I'm looking to make uh, short short films with my phone so, so. yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely i do all sorts of stuff with my phone so so much of what we teach or so much of what we learn about photography is composition and and looking at light and shadows and it it's not about the lenses and the cameras it's about what's in front of the lenses and the cameras so it applies to both very expensive cameras and very inexpensive phones or very expensive phones right it i mean it right it's across the board same rules no matter what you're using I thought I saw Phil waving his hand. Did you? He, have said, he, he said, just see left. you tomorrow, Vanelli. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. Tomorrow, okay, Vanelli. All right. So I just want to um, get a feel for what you guys think about what we're going, what we're doing, and kind of how we're um, hoping to do in the future. We're still working on how this might work a little bit better um, for people to submit their images. Um, different authors will um, chime in and help. You know help you figure out what it is you want to change or do better with your images, um, the images that you share. Again, we don't like the word critique because it, it's so negative. Um, because we've been raised to be, you know, critics are always, you know, movie critics. And, you know, so we're, we're trying not to go that route. But um, if there's anything that you need help with that we can help you with, and we feel like doing that in these Hangouts would be a little more productive than just picking a topic and randomly discussing it. Um, you know, I'd like to get your guys' feedback on that. If you want, um, you know, we can unmute everybody and um, have a little discussion about it. I know it gets difficult when there's so many people to talk all at the same time, but um, because what we want to do in the community is, is help, you know, that's what photo focus does is educates. And one of the ways we can do that is to have you guys submit images um, up to, you know, five, maybe we'd probably do like five, maybe six in an hour. So these, these usually last about an hour. Um, and, you know, have one or two of, of the photo focus authors, you know, jump on and, and share their thoughts and answer your questions and that kind of thing. So, um, well, Lori, if, if yep. this got, if this got really popular and there was a lot of folks, you could actually send diff people to different breakout rooms. That's so the there plan. could be a room that's, for landscapes yep. or portraits or whatever. That's, that's <laughs> in the plan. <laughs> so yeah, and if you, if you find that the pictures are being submitted and then you go through the group and find the photographers who you think are doing really well at that, ask them to attend right perhaps. oh definitely and there's and there's you know i mean obviously there's people you know there's people of every level in the community so i mean there's people you know i i am not confident doing some of that stuff because there's because i'm 
just that's just me but you know there's people who are out there who do this for a living like yourself and others who could also um you know help too so so that's that's good to know i i think that it, i think it's again it's you know we want to be able to help people out and and we're all here to learn and we all we all are still learning so um <laughs> You know, we're just going to figure out a different way for people to submit the images because this time I know it was the first time we did it so people maybe weren't aware. Um, but we'll we'll figure out a better way to do that. Um, so it's easier to submit an image so that we have them ahead of time that we can share the screen. Or even if we want to pull into Lightroom and show you how something might work, you know, not not show you like how I would edit it, but say, look, here's how this works if you wanted to do, you know, the like, like in um, Joanne's image, we could have maybe taken it into Lightroom and say, if you wanted to show you how you could have, what, what it would look like if we wanted to do it in black and white or how we showed you that, or if we would have just cropped it and cropped that tree off of the right side, and then you can see the difference in how that, that you know, what we're saying, you know, how that works, you know. Lori, I think that's brilliant. Yeah, you know, that's, well, that's I, I came up in the last 10 years with a mentor who does that. He's amazing. And he's, he's gentle and He's, he tells you everything that's right with your image first. He asks you all the right questions, what your intentions are. He's not giving his opinion on what you should or shouldn't have done or how you should have shot the shot. Um, he's helping you make your vision for the image happen. And if that, that sounds good, but I still want to give you credit. Well, thanks. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just sharing what I was taught, which is what it, what, how it works, right? I think that's how it yeah. works. You share what you're taught. You know, I'm in a macro photography class right now, and I'm sharing that in this community and another community because it might help somebody else. You know, so the, the nice part, the nice part about these uh, types of things, regardless of whether it's your image or not, um, hearing the feedback on any particular image uh, from multiple eyes is always good. He was just a yeah, Bob, I was going to bring up that same thing is that, um, it, and thank you again for the, the comments that, that everybody shared on the other images too, because that, that's how I, I've, you know, over the last few years since I've been doing this, that's how I've learned a lot is from not just the comment, you know, whether it's critiques or whether it's, you know, open discussions such as this, but it's not just on like, what are the comments on my image, but it's the ones on the other ones that help me when I go out in the field or whatever I am looking to shoot, I, I benefit from that. So, so Lori, I think you're right on with the ideas that you're trying to bring to, to the community. Well, I can't take credit for all of these ideas because it's a committee. There's more than just me sure. doing this. I, I, I think, it's great. I think I, all the ideas that you brought up are great. So. I'm just the can't herder. <laughs> yeah. But I've learned more about my own photography, listening to feedback given by other people about other photographs. So I've learned how to, I know you don't like the word, I've learned how to critique my own, right. I've learned how to provide my own, I've learned, oh, well, let's see, if I put this in front of him, he's gonna say that, well, I shouldn't shoot that way, let's try shooting, let's see if I can do a better job. Or as Bob said, you know, go higher, go lower, go left, go right, work the scene, you know, what do you, how many pictures do you take of that same tree? And I've heard it so many times that I was, I was in a place where people line up to take pictures and I got a shot in Winslow, Arizona, you know, standing on the corner in right. Winslow, <laughs> and people go there from all over and we went all over and I got a shot because I bent down and I looked through the window of the flatbed Ford that happened to be parking there. And I got a picture of the Glenn Fry statue looking like he was trying to get into the flatbed Ford. <laughs> And I looked all over the internet for it and couldn't find it. I'm the only one I know who has that shot because he doesn't always park the car there or park the, the Ford there. And and anyway, you, you work it, you work it. But I only learned to do that because I kept listening to people like Bob say, how many pictures did you take? Work right. the scene, did you go left, did you go right? You do this, do that, and the other thing. And I, I have one advantage over Joanne and that is that my wife understands that the reason we're out there is because <laughs> I want to take pictures. So if I'm going to take her to pretty places where she can enjoy herself, she understands that the camera is uh, the uh, what, the third party in this relationship. 
Got and it. you do what works. So my, when my husband and I travel together, he's into the history and he's into reading every little plaque that's on every little thing. And I'm like clueless, right? I go wandering because I'm looking for photos. But it's very helpful because when we get back and I'm downloading photos, I can go, what is this? Where was that? And he's got all the my information. My wife will set up the tripod <laughs> yeah. for me. She'll be setting up the tripod while I'm getting my camera out. So, you know, if I take her to places where she's going to enjoy herself, I get to take all the pictures I want. And, and, and in my case, I, I do that and my wife will go and, out and help, but she's probably not helping set up that tripod at sun, sunrise. She may at sunset, <laughs> but not at sunrise. So. Okay. Um, Lori, one of the things that you said I think is important for critiques that um, sometimes we overlook is, is asking the photographer, what was it that he was trying to do? You know, what inspired him to take that picture? And that, so that's something the critique, the critique could be very different, you know, you know, if he was trying to, you know, like, for instance, I thought I heard him say that he wanted to take the picture of the dog because the dog was sleeping and he was leaned up against something, you know, right. so his eyes are closed. So right. maybe, right. you know, I mean, you're still going to focus on that area, but, you know, but maybe would have come up with a different critique if you're trying to, you know, reach a certain thing and, and, and doing it that way. So it's, it's really kind of, important to understand what it was they were trying to get done when they were taking the picture. Right. No, I think that, I mean, personally, I think that should be the first question anybody asks before they say anything about anybody's image. But, but that's, that's a big, that's like a pet peeve of mine. So I'm very aware of those type of things when people are giving and receiving critiques. So. Okay, um, the far west airlines that are around there for San Francisco is September 12th. So sorry, somebody was, I don't know. <laughs> so I, I don't know if you guys have anything else you want to bring up at the moment or because um, that was all the images we had for, for this week. I actually did post one late, Lori. Oh, you did? Yeah. Let me see if I can find it really quick. And when, really I, quick. when I first saw the note about how many photos, I thought there might be too many. Oh, no. And I held back. But when I saw a few, I went ahead and threw one in there at the last minute. Right, just to look. see what the collective eye would would think about when you see this image. Uh, well, it would help if I typed your name in here, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why is this doing weird things? Okay, here we go. Compost. The is it a heron? What is that? That one? I is have the, no is idea it a bird? what kind of what kind. Yeah, it is. Okay, hold on. Let me let me. Um, let me get it here and I'll throw it up on the screen. Who's, um, that, he looks like he's blind. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> All right, you guys will see what I mean in one second. <laughs> I'm not usually very good at doing this stuff on the fly. So, All right, I'm going to share my screen. There we go. So what are your questions about it or what, what you, I mean, I mean, when it's a picture like this, I'm assuming you, you're just trying to capture the image. Yeah, standard you know. animal portrait. Um, just interesting. Any thoughts at all of anything that somebody might do to improve it? In general, I think it's on the bland side. He's not doing anything, so there's not much action. So the fo the for me, the focus on this one was the just the sharpness and being able to capture the beauty of the bird, but there wasn't much going on to to highlight beyond that. So I, I love the fact that there's a lot of details in the feathers. Cause I was able right. to get that. I was able to get the detail in the face, got nice bokeh. Uh, but outside of that, I don't know if there's anything else that I could do to really, I don't know, zooming in, I don't, I don't know. So I, I'm open to any, any feedback. Can, that anybody can I chime has in here? here? Yeah, well, cause I know I'm you're a zootographer, good. Steve. Yeah, I am. <laughs> um, first of all, um, texture is your friend, brush it on, don't, don't do universal um, and you've got nice texture. But what you've got is a picture of a bird with a nictitating membrane over the eye. Mm -hmm. So while I find it interesting uh, because I know what it is, most people won't understand why the bird's eye is cloudy. And it's cloudy <laughs> because that extra eyelid called the nictitating membrane. So that, if that eye had been clear and in focus, this photo would have 
stood out. It would have just, it, it's, it's a good photograph. So how do you, but, do you, I mean, obviously by spending time with these birds, like how long would you have to stand there before he, his little film thing goes away? Um, I eye? have three shots I took in succession of a California condor so at 10 frames per second. I got it clear, halfway covered and covered. Wow. In, 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 in each one in a 10th of a second. So the answer is not very long. Um, <laughs> Unless they do it to protect their eyes from the wind or the water or the dust or so many animals have it from alligators to birds to, to all kinds of, of animals have nictitating membranes. And, and only because I studied to become a docent at the zoo can I actually A, pronounce that and B, know what it is. <laughs> um, but but I, I like it because it's sharp enough. I, I would add a little texture but the problem is, is that for anybody who is not really into birds, they're going to see something wrong with the right, Like I thought he would look like he was blind. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's cool though. Like, yeah. but I, I, how I, second I, later, yeah. How many shots did you take of them? Uh, this particular bird, I probably took three, but the eye looks like that on all of them. Yeah. Okay. I just like the I like the posture on this one. Yeah, I like so the way he's yeah, facing. Yeah. yeah, I like the way he's Absolutely. facing in the composition. Sort of, sort yeah, a little statuesque there, yeah. in a sense. Yep. The yeah. eye always struck me as just being weird. I didn't I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> yeah, it, it's supposed to do that. It it just doesn't make for a very pretty picture. He's okay. covered for the wind. <laughs> Interesting. Cool. Um, I have, I have a couple yeah. ideas for you, Darren. Mm -hmm. Um. The one thing to think about is the uh, the bokeh on this is just absolutely beautiful, but I'll throw a but in there that your eye goes to the area of highest contrast and you have that super strong diagonal running across there. Yeah. If you could if you could ease that up just a little bit and basically right. what you do is take a selection of that green, you know, that's again just below it and that with a little brown there. Kind of take that, layer it over top of it. Just be, you know, the diagonal's nice. It's just that that black is so tough. It's too, it's too pronounced. Yeah. Well, that, and you know, because it just grabs grabs a lot of attention for you. The one like other it. thing you can do if you really want to enhance that fe those feathers, in addition to uh, what Steve was just talking about, or Stephen, sorry, Steve, uh, Stephen, um, <laughs> is uh, brushing in that texture is a great idea. But you can also very gently go in underneath any one of those in there with a little dodge and burn and you want to burn just a touch in the chef you know pick your light direction and then just burn a little bit underneath and that'll raise those feathers up even okay. more it'll give it just a you and you can kind of play with that add highlights add shadows and you can add so much more depth and dimension again depends on how much you want to push it you know how many of us raise shadows and drop highlights this is where yeah. you would do the opposite you drop the shadows and raise the highlights oh. and then perhaps darken the green. You can go in um, oh, yeah. and, and in an HSL and actually take the lumens of the green down. And then if you increase the, the bird, uh, then it's just going to stand out even much more. Yeah, that's approach, a great approach idea. Approach it as a portrait. Um, I'm sorry? I, I, I'd approach it as a portrait. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, look at it like it's a human. Um, the, the background, in my opinion, if, if this were a person, I love how they're looking, the background, I would actually darken quite a bit to where the bird is the subject and, and you don't, and your yeah. eye is right there focused. You didn't, it, didn't, it doesn't appear you did a vignette. No. If you did a very subtle one. No. Um, yeah, but I would definitely would be darken nice. the edges a little bit more and that yeah, background. And that doesn't have to be much, but that helps. Yeah, and then. Well, right, right. The focus will be on the bird, like you said, as a portrait. Okay, I like it. And I'm wondering what I, uh, that other comment made me think about the for, the foliage enhancer in Luminar. Um, you could, but you don't, you don't want the background to compete with the bird. Right, right. But does to give it some type of a treatment to make it more fluid? And then that other idea that someone had, I could actually take the clone tool and get rid of that diagonal line. And believe it or not, I wouldn't, throw a I wouldn't use the clone. 
Don't. Um, I would I would take a selection of the color and shape and form that's underneath, put okay. it up on its own layer, drag it up and put it over top of it, and then uh, look at your possible blend modes or okay. opacity or whatever. Because if you try and clone that, you're going to go, oh, look at all those clone tracks, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there and yeah, done that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, unless that, you do it uh, like at one percent, and you just sort of go from everywhere and and do it over it. Right. Yeah. Those things can be a very subtle, but just get rid of that horizontal line because it is. Now that bird, I see it, I can't. Yeah, the bird it stuck out more if it was a little <laughs> wider because it's a pretty white bird, right? Yeah. yeah. So you bring that bird out more, and it's going to bring that attention to it. And of course, you understand that for most of these photos. The first thing people look at is the the eye, yep. it, it, because it's generally supposed to be the sharpest thing in the picture, and people are attracted to the sharpest thing, the brightest thing, the highly contrast, you know, and all those things. So, so I have okay. a, I have a, one possible idea. What if you cropped? I don't. You wouldn't know whether this worked until you do it. But what if you cropped in from the left? And you would do two things. You would place more emphasis on the bird and you would get rid of um, like a third of that line. Do you think that would work? Would help a little bit. Yeah, I think. Maybe. I, don't I think you'd know. have to look at it and see. I mean, in my, yeah, in my, it, my personal opinion is that it'd be too much space on the right and then you wouldn't have any yeah, space on the left yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, you'd, it'd have to, you'd have to just kind of play with it to see what looked right. Yeah, because I kind of like it the way it is, but. It. Yeah. You turn it into an eight by ten vertical. Yeah. That yeah. might work too. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah it's, if, it's, I, if, if I got rid of part of the left, I would definitely want to get rid of part of the right because I'm still thinking about the rule of thirds. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. But but if you get rid of some of it, that's part of the problem is is eliminated. But I do I like the white space on each side or that negative mm -hmm. space on each yeah. side of the bird. Yeah, it yep. is nice. Yep. So many options. <laughs> no, but it's great. Aaron. Yeah, th this is beautiful. I, I really, I really like. And to your point on the composition, I think it's like perfect in that. The um, and what I was just going to point out is, Stephen, I really like the, when you mentioned, um, you know, just get a lot of shots. I think you mentioned that when the shot that you took of the, the bird that you were photographing, where you just like got a whole bunch of them, and you know, one of them had the eye open, where you whatever that membrane is that that's covering it. With, <laughs> Because I, I did this recently with um, wood ducks out here in Colorado as I was photographing some of them. And I went through those and I didn't even know that that membrane existed. Mm -hmm. And I went through and I had like out of 10 images, I think I had like three of them that the eye was open and good. But those weren't necessarily the best images that I had from a composition standpoint. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I'm learning here is just keep that shutter down and get as many images as you can through that yeah. sequence. And get rid of the ones where um, where it's not there. So I, again, yeah. one more thing I've learned tonight. Is, you just uh, have to learn to very quickly call your photos, or yeah. you can really. I mean, when you're just shooting a lot of photos in a row, if you're not willing to just go, nope, 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 it can clog up your hard drives pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> and just be 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 like you know relentless with your edit, your culling, right? Yeah. So, something else I have started doing though, when I when I take photos and say I didn't like the way that it came out, I'm starting to take those photos and I'm converting them into fine art. Right, and saving so them, way, and you're saving yeah, them. <laughs> you do some fantastic things when the eye didn't come out or there was something wrong with the maybe it wasn't as sharp. Right. Oh, good, that's okay. I can convert it into a painting and then. Right. And then <laughs> <laughs> yep. that's, okay. That's Thank you. Good Thanks thing everybody. To do too. Appreciate it. Yeah. You know the nice that's thing about that photo though is that it's really technically well done. I mean, it's really sharp and in focus. You have a nice bokeh and um, you've got beautiful textures. So there's a lot to work with. And so yeah. post-processing, you, you, you'd be rewarded instantly with decent post-processing, whatever you decide to do. Well, Where are I'm you located, awesome. Darren? I am in Southfield, Michigan. Cool. And that photo was taken at the Detroit Zoo. I'm notorious for going to the zoo as soon as they open in the morning. I had, well, you saw when I first joined the the community, I posted one of the pictures of the butterfly. Yeah. Yeah, and the blue, the the morpho, there, the blue morpho. So I'd go to the zoo and I hang out. And I so just- what that tells me shots. is 
you're going to get another chance at this guy and i want to see that next photo right <laughs> so right. Well, that, that that leads me to we, we have a few minutes left and what i what i would like to suggest is that like gail and ash and and darren um and michael the things that were suggested to you with your images you know or if there's things that you want to try and like um, run back by people like redo or make an edit and throw it in the community and you know tag Bob or myself or somebody you know one of us so we are aware that it's there I pretty much see all of the posts that come through so mm -hmm. um, you know that way we can go go back and you know see what you did and and um, you know you can kind of talk about it and and that's another way for other people in the community to also learn from what we're doing I, um, I have to laugh whole. because the sign behind Darren, the meaning of that word is constant improvement. Yes, sir. Ah, that's awesome. Right then. <laughs> so is that, that the co is that the company you work for or something or? That's me. Your company? Oh, that's you. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Yep. Awesome. How appropriate. Good. Awesome. So if you guys, you know, I mean, I, it sounds like this was a good way to do this, and we're going to streamline it in the future as we do more of these. Um, and again, if we get plenty of people submitting, we'll break off into breakout rooms and we'll do like a portrait and a landscape or a macro or, you know, whatever. Um, we have plenty of people in the community and plenty of authors who specialize in different things that can help help everybody out. So um, if anybody has any other questions or anything or just wants to chit chat for a while, we can stick around for a few minutes. Otherwise, it's getting to be my bedtime. <laughs> Or Vanelli's probably ready to go to sleep anyway. So yeah, I'm gonna take uh, off. Thanks a lot. Thank you guys. I think yeah. thank you guys all for coming too. We appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. And thank, thank you, thank you, thank you Lori you. and others yeah. for uh, all, all that you do in the community. And Good infos. And thanks for doing this. Yes. Thank you.